you know, it's, it's kind of what you expected, isn't it? From AEW at this point? What the hell is that? I don't think, I, I thought it was going to be one of two things. They were either going to show this footage at All In, or they were going to just do some makeshift thing or allude to it, the whole punk Jack Perry thing. No, they showed it. And Punk was right? It really, it didn't highlight anything wrong with what Punk said. Like, it didn't do anything different. Punk said in interviews, this is what happened. He was getting ready for his match. Jack Perry comes through the curtain. They talk. He takes Jack Perry. He puts him in a chokehold for a second. Joe and other people come in, break it up. You can see in the footage that Punk clearly turns over to Tony Khan and yells at him by the monitors. And then they pull apart and Jerry Lynn takes him and he goes in the back and that's it. So the Young Bucks use this footage. Number one, when we back up for a second here, AEW promotes this entire thing for a week of we're going to get the footage from all in, never saying outright CM Punk, never saying CM Punk's name in this promo, alluding to him, yes, literally showing him in the footage with Jack Perry, but the buildup was never saying we're going to show the footage of Jack Perry, CM Punk incident, but that's what they implied. So it was like you had to deliver on that. So did they deliver on that part? Well, they, they did show the thing that they were implying. So yes, they did their job. They, they did do that. This is being used and was used to hype up a segment, like a couple minute segment of the Young Bucks sitting down to hype up their tag team match with FTR, a dynasty. So to build steam and heat for a pay-per-view, they wanted to call back to All In in a fight, a real backstage altercation between two guys that have nothing to do with what they're trying to promote. Other than they're all friends with each other. FTR's friends with punks, and Bucks are friends with scapegoat Jack Perry, who will eventually make it back on AEW TV, and the crowd will go, woo, it's Jack Perry. Um, this, <laughs> I'm just kind of baffled by it, to be honest. So they try to build this thing up for their tag team match at Dynasty, and they try to make, the Bucks made references in the promo to Punk and saying like, like, what was it? Matt was going to Nick Jackson and he was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, don't say that. Like, we shouldn't be airing this grievances publicly. Like, it, it, implying like Punk went out and did the Errol Hawani interview talking about all this. But Punk talked openly from his side. There's always multiple sides to this stuff. Punk was explaining pretty calmly, pretty rationally, his experience, and what happened, and he was answering questions that were asked to him. This is the difference here. People, the seemingly, AEW, the Bucks, Tony Khan, to defend themselves against CM Punk in this whole interview and the altercation that already happened months and months ago and everybody moved on, their way of getting back at Punk for answering interview questions was to link the backstage footage, the camera footage, to, to this program, this very lukewarm program between the Bucks and FTR, this hot shots the product for a week. Maybe even when the ratings come out, it will hot shot it for a segment. Because throughout the whole night, so far, and I'm recording this, Dynamite is still going on, they pop this thing up the whole time, like it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So I'm tuned in and I'm looking online and people are tuned in more people than normal because it's supposed to be this thing. So Tony Khan, AEW, you did the job you said you were going to do. And you know what? You brought eyeballs to your product. In my opinion, as a fan and as a fan of AEW, I think you brought the wrong type of eyeballs, the wrong type of attention. It's always like, is, is any press good press? Does it matter? I think it does to a degree. What's the point of this? What is the point? This is ultimately to sell tickets to Dynasty, to sell tickets for the match of FTR and the Bucks, right? 
Did it do it? What do you think? Because to me, where I'm sitting, I have no more interest in this. And let me back up here for another moment. And I say this quite often to, like, to myself and to other people about AEW and some of the decisions they do on TV with their storylines and their inside baseball and they're really talking to a very specific crowd. When they do certain things on TV, and let's use this as the example, this is speaking to a very, very small section of an audience, of a fan base. This is for people that are in the know of all of these backstage things that are watching Punk doing the interview with WWE, with the other company, and you're bringing it up, and it's the Bucks doing a sit-down interview, showing footage of a guy who's not with the company, and technically another guy also not with the company, Jack Perry. So, this is part of the overall problem, in my opinion. AEW is never expanding their audience and growing their product. It's speaking to this small, hardcore fan base, I guess. And, like, I watch AEW Dynamite basically every week. I don't say I'm hardcore about it, but I want to watch wrestling and enjoy wrestling. So, but I don't know who this speaks to. And it's, again, an example of the problems I see with AEW, where it's just, who is this for? You're, you're clearly showing a guy who doesn't work there anymore. And then Jack Perry, who is in New Japan. So for anybody who's just kind of tuning in because they hear some buzz is going on with AEW today, they look at this, wouldn't they go, oh, is CM Punk back with a company? I thought he was with WWE now. Oh, who's the other guy? Is that Jungle? That's Jungle Boy. Is he on TV? No, he's not on TV. He's not with the company. Oh, okay. So is this a match now between Punk and Punk's coming back? Like, I'm talking about the casual fan. The person that's tuning in randomly. Or that likes CM Punk or likes AEW a little bit. And they, they wanted to see what this hype was going on about. The big announcement thing. The, the footage. You're, you're kind of, like, confusing people that are very casual. Number one. Because you're kind of implying, like, so are you going to have, like, FTR and Punk versus... The Bucks and scapegoat Jack Perry? Well, no, that's not going to happen. The, f the footage, too, from where I'm sitting, it didn't, it, it didn't disprove anything. You showed this all in footage that you had. Which, by the way, why didn't you show it earlier? Why didn't you show it the week after? Why didn't, when Tony Khan came out on AEW television, after CM Punk now we know quit why didn't Tony Khan when he's standing there with the big bug eyes saying that he feared for his life um, why didn't he show the footage then in defense of himself why now why is it okay now why when it was the in the moment of the event why wouldn't you show it on your program then why is it that when Tony Khan is asked in media scrums or in interviews about this situation that is months and months old and out of everyone's mind already, including CM Punk, who moved on and went to back went back to WWE. Why now? Why, when he's doing all these media things and appearances, it's always no comment, no comment. I don't want to talk about it. But you're going to approve this, showing the foot. Who does this benefit? Who's winning here? Like, I want all wrestling to do well. I want New Japan, and I want TNA, and I want WWE, and AEW, and within that ROH... I want it all to do well, because more wrestling, more wrestlers have jobs, more product, a little more competition, alternate options for people to watch different stuff. That's all good. But then you watch this. This, this is not. This is not what you need to be doing. The amount of time you spent hyping this online, pushing this through your media, your social media, Tony, throwing this through your television product. Spending the better half of your product on TV, promoting this segment, leading up to it, then giving, what is it, a minute for the actual footage, plus the Young Bucks segment, then we get FTR coming out to cut a shoot-style promo on the whole thing, basically just setting up the tag team match. So, 
in total, someone will have the runtime for it. It's probably close to 10 minutes of the entire show dedicated to this thing, using the CM Punk footage and all in, and leveraging that into this FTR promo. What's the point of that? You could have, and I've said this all week long, that you could have used all this TV time, all of this effort, all of the energy, all of the resources, instead of using this footage of a wrestler who is no longer with your organization, you could have spent the time building up an existing feud, rivalry, a new superstar, a new wrestler. Um, you used 10 minutes. You could have done a whole match instead. And FTR and Bucks, they could have done this on Twitter. And it could have been just a social media back and forth interview, sit down thing. Didn't even need to be on Dynamite. What was the point of that? You could have done so many different things with the TV time you have. And that's where I have my hands up like, what What are we doing? What is the point of doing this? And it didn't, it, it doesn't, in my opinion, it does not make AEW look any better. It makes CM Punk look correct because everything he said in the, if, if somebody just takes the, the Ariel Hawani interview he did, where he's talking about the event and then just match it up with this footage that we now have. It's exactly what he said it was, which leads me to believe more on CM Punk's side when it comes to the original brawl out, you know, like it doesn't favor AEW. The other thing I noticed too, if you go back and watch, because it just like, it just happened. Tony Schiavone, the Bucks did the promo. They did the footage. They cut to the desk and there is five seconds where you can see all three commentators and Shivani has this look of just disappointment on his face of just why did, why did we do that? That was the look Tony Shivani had on his face. And he said in previous interviews too, like, I just want to move on. I don't care about this. This guy doesn't work at our company. I want to focus on our company. I want to focus on our stars, our wrestlers, our product. Why are we giving time and attention to this? Why would you spend actual valuable airtime devoted to somebody else? Like, all of the little thing, And I believe uh, Will Ospreay also did a promo. Like, I missed it because I'm, I'm here. But I think Will Ospreay, people were just posting that, like, oh, he's replying to Triple H's comments at WrestleMania about the grind and not wanting certain wrestlers if they're not willing to do a really hard schedule and all that stuff. And you got Ospreay responding to it, too. This is the stuff I'm talking about. Who does this who does this benefit? Like Triple H didn't come out on Monday Night Raw and start addressing Will Ospreay all tongue in cheek. He did it in a interview during a press conference thing uh over WrestleMania weekend. And it was a one like liner and then it was done. AEW instead takes TV time and they're like, "Oh, let's respond to this." Who are you responding to? Who is the casual viewer? Who is the viewer that's like, oh, cool. Now we can see this back and forth. There is no war. And the tribalism stuff is really ridiculous. And I don't think it's good that Tony Khan and anybody else perpetuates it, keeps it going, tries to make it a thing. Create better products and better stories. This all-in footage did nothing. Nothing for AEW. It To me, it didn't create any goodwill with fans. And I'm a fan. But I'm like, I'm not more, I'm not more enthused to watch the product. How about that? I'm not more enthused to turn on dynamite. I'm not more enthused to watch dynasty. This did not get me to turn around and say, wow, I need to order dynasty for 50 bucks because I can't wait to see the bucks FTR match. No, it made me confused and a little sad for everyone involved. And it made me feel bad for AEW. And more so, like, more so just, like, the people that work there and the wrestlers. Like, I feel bad that, wow, you could have given, like, Aleister Black a 10-minute singles match on TV. That would have been fun, wouldn't it? You could have, Mercedes Monet could have actually wrestled instead of, you know, just cutting promos. Um, Britt Baker could have had a match. You know, like an actual match. There's, pick something that you could have had. We could have had a really cool banger of a match. We could have set up a new feud between two wrestlers or multiple people. 
But we get this. It's really disappointing. It's really sad. I'm really curious what other people have to say about it. Maybe I'm wrong. But that's my two cents on it. Just completely unfiltered. That's it. What do you guys think? To me, this this was sad. And this was a waste of time. And I, I hope that they don't do this again. And they don't keep leaning into this crap. Focus on your own product, your own wrestlers, your own company. And create a better product every single week. And fans will watch. And fans will come back. But when you do this stuff, it just it puts a bad taste in fans' mouths. And I don't think it makes people want to support the product as much. Let me know what you think. See you in the next one.